today we're going to look at how to control a seven segment LED display with the Raspberry Pi Pico. For this, we need a Pico on a breadboard, a seven segment display, a resistor, and some wires. Now this circuit diagram will help you make the connections. You can also verify your connections using this wire diagram. First, we plug in the seven segment display on the breadboard and we connect the resistor to the positive in our case because we have a common anode, but you can also use the same principle for the common cathode by connecting the common to the negative. Now connect the eight wires to the eight corresponding pins of the seven segment display and you can use GPIOs configured as outputs to control them from the Raspberry Pi. Now, once the connections are made, we got to get down to the code. As usual, we're going to import the pin module from the machine library. We're also going to have you time to add some delay. And we're going to make a list of pins. And it would be a good idea to add comments so that we know which pin controls which segment. So overall, we're going to have eight pins. Seven of them are for displaying the numbers and one of them controls the dot. So having configured each one of them to be outputs, what we'll do next is try to see if we can cycle through different numbers on the display. And for each character, we have a list of values to be applied to each one of the pins. And because ours is a common anode, setting the pins value to zero is what turns on the seven segment display. Uh, if you were using a common cathode, you would flip it and setting it to one would turn it on and setting it to zero would turn it off. So we go ahead and create multiple lists corresponding to each one of the numbers. You can also display some alphabet letters on this as well. Uh, and that's something that you can try out uh, by yourself. We'll also make a function so that we can clear the display, which basically sets all the pins to one. Now in a loop, what we're going to do is we're going to iterate over each of the characters and use each of the values and set them to each one of the pins. And then we will wait a second before we move to the next character. That's it. As we can see, our numbers step through one at a time. So you can make any number of interesting games out of this. So try this out and uh, do share with us your experiments.